What's going on my YouTube fam? Mike Durante here and we are back with another video and today we're going to be bringing a brand new segment to my channel. I'd like to call it the Photoshop Breakdown. If this is your first time stopping by the channel, why not consider subscribing? It definitely put a smile on my face. <laughs> Do you guys hear how loud my computer is? I just kill the CPU in this guy. What the Photoshop breakdown essentially is, is an overview of how I went from the base photo to the finished product. Where I'm gonna go over the details, but not waste your guys' time going on and on and on, showing you endless time lapses of the exact work that I did. And then at the end of the video, if you guys realize there's certain things that you don't know how to do or techniques that you wanna learn, leave comments and I'll be sure to make full on detailed tutorials about those topics. But one of the main points of these videos was to not make them too long, so I can't waste any more time. Let's hop into Adobe Photoshop and show you guys what we're gonna be overviewing today. I never really came up with a name for this edit, so I'm just gonna call it something based after the assets I used. So today, we are breaking down the Scarlet Witch Electricity Edit, where I took this photo and turned it into this photo. Pretty cool, huh? Let me show you how I did it. So I was contracted to make a post for a vape company and I decided I wanted to do something very different for it. So as you notice in the base image, the vape is not actually present in the shot. And that's because I took a photo of the vape completely separate from the base image. This was because I wanted to make the vape look like it was levitating without having to throw it up and down and have my shutter speed at 3000. I thought it would just be easier to take a nice clean photo of the vape at the exact same angle on a tripod and just Photoshop it into the image. Although my my layers are all over the place and not really labeled the best. Don't get mad at me. The first thing that we do in this edit is drop the vape into place. I did some small scaling and rotation adjustments just to make sure it was placed in the spot that I thought looked best, but I kind of noticed when you're placing items into an image, sometimes the best thing to do is to just move the laptop away, lean back, and see how it looks from afar. If it looks realistic, it's a good enough start. Before I dive too much deeper, I just wanted to say the assets that I used in this image. I got a bunch of electricity PNGs off of Google, and then I also got a Scarlet Witch Abilities PNG that had all six different Scarlet Witch style effects that they use in the Marvel movies. The only thing I really did with it was add a hue and saturation adjustment to it and change the color to blue because I wanted to go with a blue lighting on this effect. I'm almost forgetting one of the main tools I used in this edit that really helped sell the realism of it. In the shot, I had a blue light that lit up my face and my hands to represent the lighting that I would be recreating inside of Photoshop and to make the job a little bit easier for me. So for that, I used this guy right here, which is providing that orange hue on the right or left side of my shot. I I can't think. Oh, it's the left side. Yes, it's the left side. I set it to a nice cyan color and placed it right in front of my hands so that it would sort of emulate the light that I'd be trying to recreate in Photoshop. So before adding any visual effects, I knew that I had to adjust the brightness of certain areas of the shot. So right above my base layer, I created two different brightness and contrast adjustments, inverted the masks, and then painted it in in the specific areas that I thought would be getting brightened by the electricity. So since I was like this, my arm would have been one of the areas getting hit by the light, but the back of my arm wouldn't have been. So I only painted on light in the specific spots that I thought would be getting light to them. Then I decided I had to tackle the electricity on the vaporizer, because if I was the blue version of Scarlet Witch, whenever she uses her powers, it also like glows and affects the person that she's using them on. So I thought, all right, I need to add it on the vape because I'm making the vape levitate with my mind. So I just dropped one of the electricity PNGs that I had over the vape and then applied a liquify effect so that I could make it morph to the image a little bit better. Then I duplicated the layer and rotated it around so that it was facing the opposite way as the original one and then just did a little bit more liquefying to make sure that it was in perfect place. And then to finish off this section of the effect, I just added a little bit of blue glow by using my brush tool and screen blending mode. After this, it was time to start adding in all the hand effects and I wanted to make sure that whatever I did on the bottom hand I copied on the top hand to sort of have it have some form of equilibrium oh. equilibrium oh, I meant to say symmetry but to have it have some form of symmetry have it have wow I'm critiquing myself way too hard and to make these sort of fit a little better all I really did was add warp effects because I didn't want to be liquefying every single one of these and 
To be honest, I got a little lazy. The first one I put on was a blue flame style, and then I did the exact same on the top, but warped it differently because my hands were in two different positions. And then I added the bright orb portions to kind of act as the center points of where my powers were coming from. And then I just added one more of the asset from the Scarlet Witch download that I got to sort of kind of smooth everything over and act as a smoke and mirror for the effects that I've already placed. Following that, it was time to apply the glow to both of my hands. So what I did for this was I grouped all the hand layer of effects that I did, duplicated it, merged it, turned it to screen blending mode, changed it to a smart object, and then applied Gaussian Blur to it. It's one of my favorite ways to make glow, and if you look at any other Photoshopper on YouTube, you'll find that that's one of the more popular ways to recreate glows in a realistic fashion. And then I duplicated that layer and increased the Gaussian Blur parameters just to add a wider glow to it. So at this point, I realized that my thumb was a little bit hidden, so I duplicated the base layer and then cut out my thumb placed it above all the effects that I've done so far, and then decreased the opacity a little bit just to make my thumb a little bit more prominent. And I don't really know why I did this last step because it was kind of taking away from the symmetry aspect, but I guess I thought it looked good. I added one more of those blue flame style effects to just the bottom hand. So I guess it threw off my symmetry, but in the moment I probably thought it looked good. And I still think it does. And then to finish off this edit, all I did was group everything I've done so far, duplicated it, merged it, turned it into a smart object, and then went into my camera raw filter and just applied some finishing touches to the overall effect. So then we ended up with this. And that's all we did from get to this base image to our finished product. One thing I wanted to note to you guys was if you've done a lot of color-based effects in your photos, you'll notice that not at any point did I do any hue and saturation painting to make my face look more blue. And that's thanks to the power of RGB lights like these. And I know from following people like Callup and other photographers that they use those day in and day out for their Photoshop edits. So if you guys did have any questions like light painting or liquify or how to warp items, let me know in the comments below and I'd love to make an in-depth tutorial for for you guys. But that's officially the first Photoshop breakdown that we have done on this channel and I'm definitely going to be doing a lot more. If you enjoyed this video, definitely leave a like, a comment, potentially share it with a friend that you think would enjoy watching this, and let me know any inquiries or questions that you guys have. With that being said, I'm Mike Durante and I will see you guys in the next one.